boom, takes out the tire and he is absolutely wrecked. What is going on guys? My name is Powerbang. Welcome back to the PUBG Mobile channel where we're going to be talking today about Miramar and how you guys can control the map to get that chicken dinner. If you guys have not already done so, subscribe to the PUBG Mobile channel for more tips and tricks that I'll be dropping over the next several months. And if you're looking for daily PUBG Mobile content, feel free to subscribe to my channel. The link for that is in the description below. That being said, guys, the first thing you need to do is find a great spot to loot up. One of my favorites is right in the middle of the map, Picado. You can see that arena there that I'm targeting. White building, beautiful spot. There's a bunch of bleachers inside where you can loot up with some great gear, assault rifles, sniper rifles. It is all there for you, baby. I recommend running around the arena, both the top and bottom floors, looting up with as much gear as possible before you start loading up and ready to head outside. Before you head outside, you want to make sure that you approach those upper windows on the edge of the arena because you can find that there are a lot of enemies in this area at the initial part of the game. It's one of the few places on the map where there is a pretty high concentration of enemies. So as you loot up here, we've got that sniper rifle in hand already. We've got an M16 in hand already. A whole bunch of health kits. Now it's time to look out the window. We hear a guy close in the car, but we also see a guy off on the horizon here. We're going to go ahead and take care of him. And he is done for. And right next door in the uh, uh, Picado area, you guys are going to see a bunch of apartment buildings as well. A lot of people choose to go here, especially those that aren't early enough to drop in to the arena. The arena is the best loot, but these apartments are not too bad as well. And as you can hear, there is a gunfight going off. So I highly recommend use your ears, guys, to locate the enemies. The difference in footsteps between pounding on a hard floor versus sand. I could tell that this guy was outside. Just pop on out, go ahead and put a couple shots into him, and then loot up. Now, while you're looting up, keep your ears open. You hear those footsteps on the inside? Yeah, me too. That means there's another guy in the area, and you know what? I'm going to go fish him out. As I'm headed upstairs, I've got my ears open. And I'm using that sound to pinpoint his location. It's still above me, and I know that he's on the top right corner of the building. And look at that! We run right to him, and he is down. And look at that, he's got an eight-time scope for us, and now we know we are ready to venture out into the brave wilderness here. Before you head out, you want to look out the windows before you just look. You know, you want to look before you leave, basically. We do see a guy running out here. We almost take him out. So close, but you know he's going to have to run at this point. We'll see if he chooses to fight. Just over the crest of this building, you see a truck start to move. I see it as well, so I put my scope on him and unfortunately just miss him three times, knocking out his windows and hitting the door right below where we've gotten the kill. Unfortunately, we're not able to get him, so you know what? At this point, I feel like uh, we're safe to go ahead and chase. We did clear out the window before, and that was the only guy we saw, so we're going to go run in and hop into the van here and head off down the road. At this point, you want to be checking your safe zone, making sure you're staying in it, and pick somewhere towards the center of the zone to start posting up, or at least heading towards it, and that's kind of where you're going to start positioning yourself, and you want to make sure you're focusing on the high ground like this guy is who's shooting at me. Unfortunately, I have better aim than him, so we're able to go ahead and put some shots on him, and he is down. We take him out with the SKS. That eight times is absolutely crucial for this map. If you can find an eight times, you're in a great situation. If you can find a four times, you're in a pretty good situation. So highly recommend that you guys get those high-powered scopes early on. Now, I highly recommend the dune buggy as well. Driving through this uh, zone is a breeze with this buggy compared to the Arangel map where it's not the greatest vehicle It is great in this particular location So as you can see we've headed up to some high ground with a great 360 degree lookout over the whole battlefield here And it is kind of towards the center of the zone So we're pretty well positioned and we have very long lines of sight in all areas now as you're scanning, all you're looking for is black specks that are out there at a distance that are moving. We don't see any, so we turn around and there's a guy right there. We'll go ahead and put a couple shots on him. 
We take out Dark Griffin with the SKS, and so we are able to keep scanning. Now, every time after you shoot your sniper rifle from a distance or your rifle at all, you want to take a quick second to survey your surroundings immediately after you kill an enemy. Most of the time, you are going to have uh, a lot of attention looking in your area that people see your shots on the minimap and they're going to be paying attention to you. So you want to be on high alert, especially after you get a kill. Now, as you continue to check the zone and realize you do need to move, continue to move towards it, but make sure you're using the eyeball tool to look around and make sure that you're not getting flanked, that people aren't looking at you from the sides or even sneaking up behind you the, right, the way you just came. It is pretty easy to tail people in this map. Uh, you can stay behind them and get some easy shots off because it really doesn't take a whole lot of effort to get some shots off somebody once you're trailing them. There's long lines of sight and you can shoot them quite a ways away. Now check the horizons for bushes. They are uh, a little bit pesky. We do see a minivan here or the, uh, the Volkswagen van sitting at a compound. So we know there's a guy likely here. We do find him, zoom in and take him out with the SKS. That wraps up our sixth kill. Now, as we're sitting here waiting, we start to head in towards the compound here and on our way, there's this low rumble. So here it is, we turn around and there is the truck heading over the horizon and we are going to engage that. He does swerve towards us, shots are fired. We get the red hit marker there, which signifies a headshot. And we know this guy is hurting for sure. He's gotta be nearly dead now. Uh, any helmet that he has is probably destroyed and he crashes his vehicle into a rock. And at this point, he, he's going to have to bail out because he is stuck. I fire a few shots and this particular decision is crucial. Rather than run down into the valley here into the city where we have a potential house to house close quarter combat, I decide to flank. I'm gonna go down below the horizon here so I'm shielded from people potentially at the top of the hill and also the houses are between me and my potential enemy. Now I'm going to flank around the uh, ridge here, keeping the, the terrain between he and I. That way it shields me, and I'm going to continue to look around for people as I'm flanking around. And then once you're done with the flank, you can see here you come in from this side, and look at that, you're right on top of him where you wouldn't, he wouldn't expect you to be. And there is another guy that is him running down the way here. Now as I fire, there are shots behind me, and that is concerning for sure because they're up the hill. Now there are shots again behind me down the hill, and there are uh, a couple of guys down there firing at each other. And then again over to my right. So we've got four different sets of shots. You can see another set of shots up there at the buildings uh, to behind me to my right. So I check to see if there's any easy kills for me available down the hill, but always when you're fighting, prioritize uphill. If people are firing above you, that is who you need to find. I see a guy here, I zoom in perfectly on him. We fire and we've got that glitch with the, the mountains actually being, you know, kind of in the way. So it's just his head poking up. We do get the kill and he is obviously looking down the hill in front of him in the direction I'm running now. So I do know that there are people down this way that he was firing at. And again, since they are higher ground than the people below the hill, I'm going to ignore the people below the hill and then go take care of this compound and try to make sure that these guys get taken out. Now, as we approach, we don't really know where they are, so I want to kind of throw some grenades in here. I continue to uh, cover my approach. I hear gunshots at this point. Now I'm able to pop up over the hill, really, really confident of where these guys are. And there's one kill, and then the second guy trying to find him. There he is. And we'll uh, go ahead and take him out as well. So you'll go ahead and continue to loot up here. Make sure once you've got your loot, you head back towards the threat downhill to try to make sure that they're still in combat, otherwise preoccupied, or maybe still at low health. And as you continue to head that direction, you're gonna try to engage them as soon as possible to try to limit the amount of uh, comfort they can get back to you before you uh, go ahead and engage. Now that I head this way, I realize that this is an absolutely perfect location to pick for the end game. As you can see, these berms are able to protect me from a ways away. I do see a guy running off in the distance and we're able to go ahead and put some shots on him. Now he is running and it's really difficult to tell how steep the terrain is or if he's behind a berm. So I'm predicting incorrectly on a lot of these sniper shots, but because I do have an eight times scope, we're able to go ahead and pick up the kill there on Max Loco. Now notice the berm here naturally shields me from the left. Woo! That guy above me, guys. Notice after you fire again, make sure to look around. 
uh, as there are a lot of people that will immediately flock to your position and start looking at you just like that guy did. And had I not turned around there to look up the hill, that would have been the end of me. But we do that, and notice the berms here, like I was saying before. This is going to protect me uh, to my north, which is across the ravine here, and then also behind me to the west. There is no way people can kill me unless they get right next to me, and that, that way I can hear their actual footsteps. So we get lucky, the plane, well, lucky or unlucky, depending on your perspective, the plane flies right over the top of me, drops a crate directly next to me, and I decide, you know what, I can be the first one here. I'm going to go ahead and loot this crate, grab this military vest, see if there's an AWM. There is not, unfortunately. But we go ahead, loot up, and we're going to uh, leave the area as fast as possible and wait for others to approach this crate. So again, you see where I'm sitting. Listen for gunshots off on the distance. Target them with your mini map. And once I zoom in, I see the buggy. Scroll to my left, and there is a guy right there. We headshot him once, and then go ahead and get that finishing kill. We see that he's looking down the uh, the ravine here, and I'm wondering who he was firing at. So that's my uh, priority right now. I see a couple guys across the way. Uh, one of them has a kill stolen from me, and then immediately hightails it. I know if I just uh, eventually get a shot on him, he's probably low HP and running for his life. We do hit him once and take him out. And again, as suspected, there's a guy approaching the crate. We are unable to get the shot off on him uh, with the SKS. So we pull out the M16, and as he approaches, a couple shots here. We knock off his helmet, headshot there, and now he is completely screwed. So we're going to throw a couple grenades at him, try to get the kill. Unsuccessful, but we come out targeting this box. We know he's behind there. He peeks. You don't peek on me, Shock Blaze. So he is down with the M16. 14 kills to our name at this point. Three people left in the map at this point. So we know we're getting down to the very end, and the zone is rather large. So I'd prefer to stay in this exact same high ground terrain with the uh, you know couple sides blocked here and the ability to kind of run around and uh, hide further if needed. But we see a guy across the way. My suppressed sniper rifle is able to get some shots on him. He is jumping around, making himself very difficult to hit. And he's going to go ahead and hide in the shack. So I know he's there. We're going to go ahead and uh, just kind of prone out in this position. Again, zoom in on him. You know, get kind of try to lock him down. Uh, but also pay attention to your surroundings as well. You don't want to get caught by somebody shooting you from the side. The zone does come in, so I know the left of me is clear. The right of me I've cleared uh, several times before, so I kind of figured the guy was either down in the ravine or over on the other side with this guy. So he leaves the house. He's going for this VW van over there. And uh, this is the play of the game so far. He's going to drive this van, try to get down into the ravine. And I'm putting shots on him like crazy, trying to take him out. And I'm getting so close. But watch this shot on his tire. Not this one, but this one. Boom! Takes out the tire. And he is absolutely wrecked. The van falls down the hill. And he is getting blown up here. Now, he does drive out of my vision just out of sight on the hill line here, but we are going to see a little engagement here as we wait for him to reappear. Scanning for the third guy, there is the fight that we were waiting for, and the M249 of this other dude takes out the guy in the van. So we know that there's one dude left, and as we head down the hill, we know he's off to the right. We see him in the uh, uh, field there. We get a couple shots off on him. He's got that 249 full auto on me, so it's a matter of time. I've got to go ahead, put some shots on him to take him out. We get the winner, winner, chicken dinner, wrapping up a 15-kill victory on the solo mode here. Hopefully, you guys were helped by the tips in this video. Use that high ground as much as possible. That's all I got for this episode, guys. This is Power Bang. Make sure you guys subscribe to both channels, PUBG Mobile and mine, down in the description below. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.